Students, so far we have discussed about the magnitude of the force acting on a charged particle moving in a magnetic field. Now let's talk about its direction. Student, a great scientist, John Ambrose Fleming, suggested a rule to find out the direction of the force acting on a charged particle moving in a magnetic field. And that rule is known as Fleming's left hand rule. Now let's discuss about that. Fleming's left hand rule Fleming's left hand rule student this rule is used to detect the direction of the force acting on the charged particle moving in a magnetic field according to this rule if we stretch our forefinger, second finger and thumb of our left hand right angle to each other such that forefinger points in the direction of magnetic field, second finger points in the direction of current, then thumb indicates the direction of force. So student according to this rule, According to this rule, if forefinger, second finger, and thumb of left hand are stretched at right angles to each other such that Forefinger, points in the direction of magnetic field Second finger, points in the direction of current then The thumb indicates the direction of force. So, student, according to this rule, if we stretch our forefinger, second finger and thumb of our left hand mutually perpendicular to each other such that forefinger points in the direction of magnetic field, second finger points in the direction of current, then stored in the direction in which our thumb points is the direction of force. Student C, according to this rule, Let us suppose this is our left hand. T 
his thumb this is four finger this is the second finger thumb gives the direction of force four finger is in the direction of magnetic field and second finger is in the direction of current so student the direction of the force acting on the charged particle moving in a magnetic field is given by fleming's left hand rule now student do remember that the direction of force on a particle having positive charge is opposite to the direction of force on a negative charge student remember that the direction of force acting on a positive charge is opposite to the direction of force acting on a negative charge moving in the same field student we know that the direction of current is opposite to the direction of flow of negative charge so student if the negative charge is flowing and positive charge is flowing in the same direction then the force acting on them due to magnetic field will be in opposite directions so student this is what you have to remember now student so far we have discussed about the magnitude and the direction of the force acting on a charged particle moving in a magnetic field student we have discussed that the charged particle can change the direction of the motion of charged particle so student now let's see how it changes the direction of motion of the charged particle student we have studied that force is q v b sin theta now student if the charged particle is moving in the direction of magnetic field c if this is the direction of magnetic field and the charged particle is moving in its direction it is moving in the direction of magnetic field this implies that theta is zero hence no force is acting on the particle students since no force is acting on the particle therefore it will keep on moving in the same path along the same path now student if the charge particle is moving perpendicular to the field see student we have discussed in our previous lecture 
that we can show a vector by cross or dot student cross here implies that the magnetic field is into the plane it means the magnetic field lines are inward so this is the direction of magnetic field now student the charge particle is moving like this now student magnetic field is in the inward direction and the charge particle is moving like this so force will act on it and student that force due to that force it will move in a circular path of radius r students see we know whenever a particle moves in a circular path the force is always acting on the particle towards the center and student at each point on the circular path the force is towards the center and it is perpendicular to velocity same is the case here student the particle is moving in a circular path now student the particle is moving in a circular path because at each point velocity is perpendicular to force student as we have discussed that this force is perpendicular to both b and v so student this force is perpendicular to v and this is the case when a particle moves in a circular path then the force is perpendicular to v so student the particle will follow a circular path particle will follow a circular path now student this is the case when theta is 90 this is the first case now student when theta is 90 then f and v both are perpendicular student as theta is 90 and we have discussed that b is in the inward direction and particle is moving like this so student force is acting in the upward direction and student due to this force it will move in a circular path so student this is the case when the particle is moving at right angle to the magnetic field now student it is not necessary that a particle will always move at right angle or it is move in the direction of magnetic field if it is moving at any other angle then student the path of the particle will be helical and you will discuss about it you will study about it in higher classes now student we can calculate the radius of the circular path see student we know whenever a particle is moving in a circular path it needs centripetal force and student in this case the centripetal force is provided by this magnetic force acting on the charged particle so student centripetal force is provided by the magnetic force now student we know centripetal force is mv square by r as it is provided by the centripetal force so it is qvb now student see here i am using qvb as in this case the force acting on the charged particle is maximum and we know that maximum force is given by qvb 
So student this maximum force is providing the necessary centripetal force. From this we will get <coughs> R is equal to V and V will, will cancel out each other and we get MV by QB. So student this is the formula to calculate the radius of the circular path of the charged particle that it will follow while moving perpendicular to a magnetic field. Now student here m is the mass of the particle, v is the velocity with which it is moving, q is the charge on the particle and b is the magnetic field. Now student we have discussed that magnetic field will change the direction of motion. Student see the particle was going like this in this direction perpendicular to the field due to the force acting on the charged particle its path gets changed and now it is moving in a circular path. Now student the part magnetic field has changed the direction of motion. It means it has changed the direction of velocity but the speed of the particle remains the same. Now student magnetic field will only change the direction of motion of the particle its speed remains the same and kinetic energy of the particle also remains the same cause work done is zero. Student as a particle is moving in a circular path so force is perpendicular to the displacement and hence student work done is zero. So student as there is no work done and we know that the change in the kinetic energy is equal to the work done. So student if no work is done on the particle therefore kinetic energy of the particle remains the same cause work done on the particle is zero. Student as the work done on the particle is zero so kinetic energy remains the same. Similarly speed remains the same only the direction changes and hence student as we know that velocity includes both magnitude and direction therefore student the velocity of the particle changes but its speed and kinetic energy remains constant or remains the same. So student we have discussed about the force on a charged particle moving in a magnetic field. Now student let's solve few numericals. <coughs> 